We are back, and uh, this is this is the best way to cap off getting back into our regular routine. It's with another commitment to break down for K-State football because uh, it, the train really didn't slow down when we were out in Las Vegas. We Unfortunately, it was on Wednesday when it came through after we had talked to everybody from K-State and everything, and you know it was a little bit slower, and we were kind of walking around, and we got this, this thing. It's like, oh, there's the cat signal. Who's it going to be? And we were scrambling for a little bit. Uh, and then it was Ashton Moore, which made a lot of sense after we thought back to what Austin, his brother, said to us uh, the day prior when we asked about Ashton's recruitment. And I don't know if he meant it like this, but it did, in hindsight, seem a little bit like a hint because he made a comment about wishing he had another year of eligibility to come back and be able to play a season with his brother Ashton. Uh, so that's what K-State is getting here. They are getting somebody that looks almost identical to Austin. Uh, how does the play resemble uh, Ashton's brother, Austin, though? I mean, even the play style is very similar, like uh, Ashton kind of like Austin. I, the one thing that I'm really like learning about uh, this process with Ashton and Austin is kind of getting back in the saddle of, you know, saying the correct name because they look so similar also. Uh, but Ashton plays very, very similar to Austin. Both are a little bit undersized for to like play that linebacker spot, but both play so hard and have such high football IQs to really make up for it. And, and I think that both would agree that they are about six foot six one, and that that's kind of a little bit of a disadvantage for them, but they could make it work so well because I mean, Austin is the machine. Ashton is kind of like that mini machine where he plays just like Austin or just plays just like Austin. So he had like 125, 128 tackles this season and just kind of flies around the field, hits really hard, plays with good football IQ. And you're kind of seeing this at the linebacker spot where they're getting a lot of guys that really understand and know the game. And I think that that's really important because the linebacker spot is pretty important in the three, three, five. And you really have to understand a lot of different uh, leverage and you have to understand a different, a lot of different ways to kind of attack and get off blocks. And the, the thing that Ashton really brings to the table is physicality. Cause I mean, if you've been watching these highlights I and mean, he destroyed uh, some poor soul while he was blocking as a running back. Uh, and he is an all state selection twice at linebacker and once at running back. So he's, he's a really good athlete as well. Yeah. You can kind of see a, a little bit of everything. And yeah, you, you mentioned the athleticism part. I, I don't know if people would be surprised to, to see, you know, his, his offensive numbers too. And there was a highlight in there already uh, of him on offense and, I mean, to you, what what does that aspect of his game mean? I mean, he's not not like he's going to be an offensive player at K State, but what does it signify that he has the ability that he's done that, and how does that translate to what he can do to help K State defensively? I, I think that his offensive highlights and his offensive stats just kind of shows like what kind of athlete that you're getting because I know that there will be some people that kind of scoff at this as. His brother's already on the team. You're probably throwing him a bone, whatever. But that's not the case. That's not how it really works. Like, uh, if that were the case, K-State probably would have put a full court press on Lincoln Cure's brother yeah, as a, as a walk-on uh, this past uh, spring when he entered the transfer portal from Fort Hayes State. So it's a guy that K-State obviously knew about for a really long time. He camped at K-State. And really... The whole thing, it, K State was never not in the lead, but I was more curious and wanting to know about how his process was going to go, uh, because you know a Ashton does this without taking an official visit to K State, and it's not like he really probably needed to take one, uh, with his brother being a sixth year senior now, but it's one where you really. If I was to really handicap how a race was going to go with him, it would have been okay. He takes an official visit or an unofficial visit and just commits right then. Or it would have been something like he got the uh, the uh, offer and just committed right away. 
And neither of those really took place, which makes it a little bit more of a unique kind of recruiting win for K-State because he got the offer May 30th and then commits Ju July 10th without taking a visit. So I, I think that that part is really interesting. But I also know that with Austin being on the team and being such a big leader for K-State in his entire time in Manhattan that I'm not really surprised that it ended up going K-State's way this fast. Well, so yeah, we talked about how the, the recruitment was a little different because, I mean, there was a stretch there where we were trying to figure out uh, what what the the game plan actually was here. And it seemed like this was one that could have moved fast. I think in one of our recruiting updates, we talked about it a while ago. I'm like, yeah, this will happen at some point. And then it never did. So you're like, well, what what is going on here? And then out of the blue. So uh, what, what do you think it means in terms of K-State's like desire for Ashton Moore and kind of what the plan will be for him once he gets to Manhattan. I think that there was a really strong desire for K-State and Ashton Moore because I think that this was one where K-State really wanted to be that first team to offer him and was uh, followed by Old Dominion who has a lot of uh, K-State ties on their staff as well. So I wonder how much the, like that kind of played into uh, them offering Ashton Moore as well. And I think that the plan will be to, I, I believe that he, and just like all the other linebackers in this class, and that's just not even a knock on them. That's just linebacker is a tough spot to play right away. And we kind of saw the growing pains that Austin Romaine had to go through this past season because he was a true freshman that might not have been ready to play, but had to because there were so many injuries in front of him that this is probably a red shirt and just kind of see where he goes and develops. And I mean, it, we heard about how good Austin was going to be within his first two years. I think it was Scotty Hazelton that actually called him the machine for the first time in 2019. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Ashton kind of take on a little bit of uh, his brother's role and just kind of, keeping his head down and going to work and becoming a really productive player. Uh, and, and this is another one where I wouldn't be shocked if the first time we see Ashton on the field as special teams, uh, because I, I think that that's something that his brother took some pride in, in the early stages of his career. And I think that Ashton will kind of do the same thing. Yeah. And that's just one of those two where special teams isn't always about the athleticism. It's about, do you know where you need to be? Do you know how you need to make the play? All that. And certainly Austin Moore has shown that ability and it's translated into becoming, you know, an all big 12 linebacker. Uh, now Ashton Moore kind of comes in and, and that's where things go. And it's crazy to think about the kind of the ascent of Austin Moore, because you're right there. There were those mentions early on. Uh, and then, you know, the machine nickname gets thrown out there and you kind of go, really? This guy, this guy's the machine. Uh, but then it just seemed like at some point during the 2022 season, you're like, yeah, Austin Moore is just everywhere on the field at the right time. Uh, and the nickname makes sense. And here he goes into basically year three of being a really impact player on K-State's defense. And uh, I, you can never go wrong if you're going to take somebody that has the physical traits that Ashton Moore has, like he's shown that at the high school level, and then knowing, okay, his brother did this for us. Like we feel pretty comfortable having these bloodlines in our program. Like this isn't a bad move in any way by K-State. No, it's, it, it's a funny move as well in the sense that like, I know that a lot of big 12 programs are sick of hearing the last name Lockett. And, and I think that the last name Moore now is going to be one of those that big 12 fans are also sick of hearing because I mean, this is going to be, they've had, Austin for these six years and then Ashton's coming in next year. So there's going to be at least 11 years straight of a more on the roster at linebacker. And, and I mean, I, I know that I think it was Oklahoma fans especially had like the haunting memories of Lockett. So I'm, I'm really excited to kind of see when Ashton takes over and looks exactly like Austin, how the rest of the big 12 schools look or operate and kind of, think about that because I mean there were there was there's been a few times where Austin has been on the field Nashon has been visiting for a game and I've just kind of looked over and been like wait 
wait, Austin's on the field, like, but Ashton could wear the uniform, and I don't think that I would be confused. Yeah, it'll, uh, that, that'll be one that Big 12 fans are going to be going, this, this guy's played for 10 years in the Big 12. Uh, so I don't know. May, maybe Ashton will want to choose a different number than 41 when he gets to K-State, just to make sure I, people aren't uh, you know, thinking that. As as a sicko, I kind of hope that he wears forty one just to mess with everybody. Yeah, I I would agree. I I would I would be in favor of that. But Ashton Moore is a Wildcat. K State now sits with fifteen commitments in their class of twenty twenty five. Final question for you, Drew: uh, How much more does that number grow by the start of the season? So at kickoff of the UT Martin game, how many more commitments than fifteen does K State have? I would set the line at half. And that that's just kind of where we're at right now. There aren't a ton of names right now for K-State. Uh, Cade Peterzak still uncommitted, which the longer that that kind of plays out, the more I feel a little bit better about K-State, but also think Oklahoma probably still in the lead. Uh, Nelson McGuire is another name. I believe he'll be announcing his commitment July 31st. It was one where initially we kind of thought Texas Tech and then you kind of peel it back and Texas Tech is adding a million offensive linemen in this class, it seems. And everybody kind of thinks, okay, maybe K-State's in it more than more than you think. And then again, you kind of hear just more Texas Tech again. So I, I believe that he'll probably go to Texas Tech. Noah King is probably your best bet if you're looking for next commitment or at least next commitment by commitment by the fall uh he's a safety from ohio i believe he'll be taking a, a, a visit to k-state when the contact period opens back up july 25th and he's a, a one where his recruitment started to blow up in the month of june uh was going to take visits to nebraska and kentucky but ended up not and now k-state kind of sits in here and if they could get him on a visit it seems like that he could potentially uh, commit and get that wrapped up because he wants to be committed by the end of the month. So that's one to really watch out for. But I wouldn't think that you'll see a ton of cat signals uh, before the fall. I just think that right now, with KC sitting at 15 commitments, and they're probably wanting to be in that 18 to 20 high school range, then we're going to see a little bit of uh, movement on their boards. And I think that we'll see a few official visits during the fall and get commitments from there. But the class is pretty much wrapped up, which if you go back to our January video, as I said, would be what would end up happening and would be a really good thing for K-State. And it, and it is because they got a lot of their priority targets in the months of June and July so far. Well, that sounds like good news for uh, the Cat fans. So a little bit of a slower time over the next couple of months for people to uh, remember. And that, I guess, gives everybody time just to, you know, instead of grinding through waiting on recruits, you're just uh, sitting there and able to play EEA sports uh, for the, you know, the foreseeable future. So that'll yeah. do it for Drew Galloway. I'm Mason Voth. We're out of here. If the Wildcats do get a uh, pop-up commitment, sometime over the next couple of months or whenever it happens we'll be here right for you and then uh also we'll just have daily content this week as well back to a normal schedule now that we're back from media days and vegas so we are out of here we'll talk to you again